We're going to look at Paul, his visit uh, to Antioch in Pisidia, and then we're going to look at the last church, the seventh church. Well, here at Antioch, the second time, Paul received the call that started him upon his great missionary journeys into Asia, Minor, and Europe. This earned for him the title of Apostle to the Gentiles. Let's visit the St. Peter's Church here at Antioch. Uh, let's step inside. It's so wonderful to look at these interesting sights. As certain ones of the church ministered to the Lord and fasted, they were commanded by the Holy Spirit to set apart Paul and Barnabas for a special work. So he came here, he and Barnabas. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. When he came and, when he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. After all this was done, directed by the Holy Spirit, those apostles set out upon their first missionary journey, and there was a young man that accompanied them called Mark, John Mark. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. So they're on the waters now. Going to Seleucia, which was Antioch's seaport, some 25 k's from that city, they took ship to the island of Cyprus. When they had arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. That's Mark. This was a custom of Paul throughout his ministry. On a Sabbath, he looked up for a church and he worshipped on a Sabbath. Now when they had gone through the island of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, what a shock, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, son of Jesus. Paphos was the headquarters of the Roman proconsul or governor of the island, Sergius Polos, a man of sense and discernment. You also have a pillar of Paul on the island, here you see it. They explored the island from east to west and came to the city of Paphos. What happened there? But Jesus, who was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man, this man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Jesus, or Elamas, as he also called, was a chancer and a sorcerer. But Elamas the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Fearful of losing any influence he might have over Sergius Polis, but Jesus opposed the apostles in the presence of the governor. What a mess up. <laughs> Shame. And then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of all deceit and fraught, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell upon him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. This remarkable incident convinced the governor of the truth of the gospel, and he accepted it. God works in strange ways to perform his will. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. I wish I could have heard that sermon. Now when Paul and his party set sail from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John, John Mark, 
departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Shame. What a disappointment. Paul thought this, he would, he would, he would make it. He didn't. If you're a young man who tried but, and failed, here's a story for you. Let's follow them to their next destination. Ruins of ancient Perga. When I visited Perga, I thought of Paul's visit to the city. You can read the history of the place when you visit there, and it's, it's quite interesting. <clears throat> the ruins tell a very, very, very sad story. It was here that John Mark, discouraged because of hardships and difficulties, left him and returned to Mama at Jerusalem. Paul, it's too hard. I'm going back. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Eventually, his departure caused a break in the relationship of Paul and Barnabas. Let's follow them to their next destination. Paul and Barnabas continued on to Pisidian Antioch. There were two Antiochs. A city some 160 k's north of Perga in the Taurus Mountains. Mark wasn't prepared to walk off the distance. Here you see some of the old restorations. Now Paul and Silas did not make use of public transport like this little motorbike. They walked all the way, 160 k's, to preach the message. You know, when you have a passion for God, distance does not matter. Inconvenience does not matter. Oh, we, that all of us should have the fire of Paul. The stones in Antioch, in Pisidia, invite you to come and listen as they tell the story of the two missionaries who visited here. So, now we'll continue with part two. On our way to Laodicea. What is the difference between the Philadelphian and Laodicean door? Both churches mentions a door. Now what is the difference? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. The door in heaven is open. The one on earth, my door, may not be open. This is the difference between the two doors. This door can only be opened from the inside. That's my heart. God is going to give me the choice. Uh, have you heard the front door bell ringing lately? And you realize God is knocking at your door. By the way, he's knocking at every sinner's door. And it depends upon us what our future would be. Snow-covered Taurus Mountains, just opposite Laodicea. Oh, I wish you were hot or cold. But you are lukewarm. Message of insulated water pipes. The sun changed the cool water from the fountains to lukewarm water when reaching Laodicea. Why this nauseous look at the face of this old man? He says, if only the water was either cold or what? The stones tell of the historical and prophetic events that happened in Laodicea. And here you've got some info when you visit the site. What is the meaning of the name? means judgment of the people. God is going to, to clear the books. He's going to decide. When did judgment begin? 1844. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness 
the beginning of creation of God. Beautiful description. History recorded the reaction of the previous six churches. What about the reaction of the Laodiceans? Will they open the door or not? And by the way, we are Laodicean. I know your works. That's, that's so important. Somebody is checking on us. With love, of course. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Straight words. Because you say, I'm rich, I've become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Is it possible that I, as a Christian, can fool myself? Listen to this. I love this. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in, f in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, you naked, you poor, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see what a God. He sees my condition. I don't see it. He sees it and he says, I've got something better for you. My grace. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, please be zealous and repent, the Lord says. What was their financial position? Man, they were so wealthy. They were wealthy, independent Christians. They felt good about themselves. Some of the wealthy church members began losing their dependence on God. So prosperity can be dangerous. To what extent does society have an influence on me? It's very important to know this. As long as I acknowledge my spiritual needs, I will hunger and thirst for spiritual wealth. If you are self-sufficient, my dear friend, I have good news for you. God's saving grace can make you spiritually humble and wealthy. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, Look, hey, watch out. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's come down and humility and he's, he's knocking at my heart. If any, anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. This is so precious, so intimate. And to him who overcomes, I will grant, and this is the greatest gift he can give, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, be partner in the administration of heaven. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This expensive aqueduct transported their water from a distance of 10 kilometers. Tributaries of the Likos River deposited their minerals here. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Imagine the volume of tourists coming here. Colors during the day. Look at that. Colors at sunset. Look at that. The medicinal value of the thermal water called for the erection of a famous medical school. They boasted with an excellent health message. 
Are you a health fanatic? Please be humble. Adjacent to the medical school was a temple dedicated to the Greek god of medicine called the Great Physician. They took dry mud from the thermal waters and mixed it with the mineral oils and chemicals. When it became dry, it changed into a fine powder. Mixed with water, it had healing qualities. How sad. They produced eye ointment, but were themselves spiritually blind. The ruins whispered to me. A visitor from afar came to us one day. He brought us a message from the prophet John of the Isle of Patmos. I know your works, says the letter, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. You know, when it's cold, you put on a warm dress. And when it's extremely hot, you take off your clothing. There is action. Snow-capped Taurus mountains and steaming thermal water. But when the weather is pleasant, we don't change our clothes. It would be more pleasing to the Lord if lukewarm professors of religion had never named his name. They are a continual weight to those who would be faithful followers of Jesus. They are a stumbling block to the unbelievers. Half-hearted Christians are worse than infidels, for their deceptive words and non-committal position lead many astray. The infidel shows his colours. Have you read the, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector? Here's a picture of them. The one thought he was brilliant, the other one realised he was lost. How does Jesus see the two prayer attitudes? The lukewarm Christian deceives both parties. He is neither a good worldling nor a Christian. Satan uses him to do a work that no one else can do. If there's a lukewarm person that you know of, pray for him. Because he's an instrument of Satan. I tell you, this man, that was uh, the publican who beat his chest, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone who exalts himself. You know, and we like to brag at times. For everyone that exalts himself will be humbled. <laughs> and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Laodicea. I need advice. I'm tasting this this water. It's nauseous. Spit out or swallow. Thank you for the advice. Gone is the tepid, lukewarm water. You're looking at the place at Pasar Gade, where you have languages in three, in three different languages, writings in three different languages by Cyrus the Great. He writes, the man who knows not, and knows not that he knows not, he is a fool. The man knows not, and knows that he knows not, he will learn. This man who knows, and knows not that he knows, is asleep. The man who knows, and knows that he knows, is wise. Persian proverb. Relationship between Laodicea and the five foolish virgins. Though the professed followers of Christ are in a deplorable condition, they are not yet in so desperate a strait as were the foolish virgins whose lambs were going out, and there was no time in which to replenish their vessels with oil. There is yet a chance to remedy their state. The Laodicean message is full of encouragement for the backslidden church 
may yet buy the gold of faith and love, may yet have the white robe of the righteousness of Christ, that the shame of their nakedness need not appear. Purity of heart, purity of motive, may yet characterize those who are half-hearted and who are striving to serve God and mammon. They may yet wash their robes of character and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. There is hope for our churches if they will heed the message given to the Laodiceans. How may weak sinners like you and I overcome? While he, that's God, embraces the human race with his human arm, he grasps the throne of God with his divine arm, thus uniting humanity to divinity. Isn't this beautiful? He embraces us with two arms, the divine and the human, and he presents us to the throne of grace. The majesty of heaven, the king of glory, descended the path of humiliation step by step and it was a very long way. Step until he reached the lowest point possible for humanity to experience. And why? That he might be able to reach even the lowest of mankind sunken in the very depth of degradation, though they be, that he might be able to elevate them to the highest of heaven. What a God we serve. He has promised to him that overcomes, I will go on to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Wonder of wonders, man, a creature of the earth, dust elevated to the throne of the king of the universe. Marvelous love, inexpressible, incomprehensible love. He wants to take this wretch and put him on the throne of God. Mm. Is it possible to say no to such love, to such saving grace? Please, my friend, let him in. Father in heaven, we're overwhelmed with your love for sinners. Thank you for condescending, coming down to the door of my life and gently knocking at that door. Help me not to let you keep on knocking. Help me to open the door, invite you to come in and fix up my mess. I love you, God, and help me to show that love and the way we, I treat people. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for watching this presentation. To subscribe to our channel, click here, then click the bell to get notifications. For the next presentation, click here. See you next time.